One question that sometimes arises is how to connect a mono signal to a stereo amplifier or vice versa, how to connect a stereo signal to a mono amplifier. There are a lot of people who play musical instruments and often have a mono signal they want to connect to a stereo amplifier or they have a situation where they just need one speaker and they have a mono amplifier but they need to combine a stereo signal to play into that amplifier and that's what we'll talk about in this video. One is very easy to do, the other is not so easy to do and can have complications. It also has a bit of historical trivia in the music recording industry and we'll talk about that as well. Well first off is connecting a mono signal to a stereo amplifier. And for example, I reviewed this amplifier in the last video. It was 10 watts per channel. But, you know, you're dealing with a 20 watt amplifier because you have two channels. And you might as well take advantage of them. So it's pretty easy to connect the mono signal to the stereo amplifier. So this here represents our stereo amplifier. Of course it has two amplifiers inside. It has the left input, the ground, and the right input. Well connecting the mono signal just involves connecting the ground or common line up to the ground of the stereo amplifier. So that just connects straight through. Now the actual signal line connects directly to the left input and also the right input. So you just connect them together like that. And really that's it. The only possible issue is with two inputs this line is driving. You might have to worry about the input impedance of the amplifier. Now in the real world the input impedance of the amplifier is quite high and the driving capability of the output where the signal comes from will be able to handle that. But just be aware of that, that you might run into an issue. One way to do that is connect it to a Y splitter type cable. This I got from Radio Shack a long time ago when there was a Radio Shack around here. But anyway, the mono signal goes in here and it's split internally into two connectors that can connect to a stereo amplifier. And there's different types of connectors you can get. They probably sell these things on eBay. Just look up Y signal splitter cable. And you can probably find one that will work for your purpose. Our next situation is taking a stereo signal and combining it into the input of a mono amplifier. Or mixing it, if you will. So we have our signal our left ground or common and right line and we need to mix those together and send it into the input of this amplifier. Now normally you think well I can just connect the left and right lines together. Well you really shouldn't do that because what happens is if let's say the right channel is sending a signal and the left channel is not and you just shorted them together. Well, the output is normally fairly low impedance, so you're essentially shorting the right channel into the left channel, and that's not a good thing. There might be some situations where it would work, but the lower impedance could cause higher distortion, and with a uh, output like a headphone player, you could even damage its output circuit, so you really should not do that at all. What you should do is connect a resistor to each channel, the left and right channel, and I just put R here. The actual value will depend on the impedance of the circuit, but I would say you would be safe with a 1K resistor up to 10K, somewhere in between there. If you're using a the headphone output of a music player, you could use a lower impedance. 1K would be low enough, I would think. Now the line output from a uh, 
CD player or tape player, or whatever, it might require a little bit higher impedance. You might try like a 4.7K, I think would be safe. So if you do that, the signals will combine and you connect that to the input of the amplifier. And of course, the common ground will just connect to the common ground input part of the amplifier. And that's it. But there is some implications in doing this, and that's what I'll talk about next. Okay, so I've redrawn the stereo to mono mixer circuit with the resistors vertical so you can see the potential divider effect that goes on. Because of the impedance of the amplifiers driving this, if one channel is playing a signal and the other is not playing that same signal, the channel that is not playing the signal will act as a sync, a current sync to the other channel. In other words, Let's say we had a signal coming out of the left channel that wasn't present in the right channel. We'll say that's a one volt signal. Well, it would pass through these resistors and be sunk in the other channel. In other words, this would be like a ground or a zero potential for that signal. And the effect of having the same value resistors means you have half the voltage. So you had one volt here. So now this is half a volt and of course zero volt. So in other words you have half the voltage on the output. Vice versa is true. If the right channel is putting out a one volt signal not present in the left channel, you'll have that half a volt signal again. Now the problem comes in is when you have the same signal on both channels. You have a one volt signal here, one volt signal here, you're going to have a one volt signal here. So what happens is all the mono mixed or center panned signals will come up much louder on a mono amplifier output. Well this was a problem back in the 60s. You know they often panned instruments fully left or right and you know had a lot of mono content as well in the stereo signal. So what they would do, they would release an album in stereo and they'd also have a mono version because the stereo played on mono equipment would have that same effect. The mono panned instruments and vocals and stuff would be a lot louder. It would sound unnatural or not the way they intended the music to sound. So they would mix it properly for the mono record to be played on mono equipment. So the little historical trivia thing that comes up here is, well, they developed a system so they wouldn't have to produce two albums anymore. They could just make one stereo album and it would be compatible with mono record players. And it was called the CSG system. And how that system would work is they would shift the phase of one of the channels. You know, if you did an extreme case, let's say you had a uh, one volt signal here and it was 180 degrees out of phase on the other channel, you had negative one. Well, you'd get no output because it would totally cancel out. But the way this system works is they would shift it partially like 90 degrees. So what would happen is you, know, you have one volt here and it wouldn't be one volt because it's phase shifted. So you would never end up with that one volt here. So the center pan signals would not come out as loud. So they would release albums in stereo that would be compatible with mono record players. That worked great. However, it was a problem with the imaging of stereo. When you shift the phase between the channels, it screws up the stereo image. The uh, mono panned instruments and vocals no longer sounded like it was in the middle. It, it kind of smeared it across the uh, stereo image a little bit. But I just wanted to point that out when you do mix the stereo signal into mono. The way stereo is recorded nowadays, that's not a real big issue. 
Here is a CSG stereo ad from 1968 in a billboard magazine telling us how great the system's supposed to be. As Dave on EEV blog would say, it's just ad wank. But you can pause it if you want to read all that. Yeah, it does make it compatible, but it screws up the stereo image. Well, that's interesting. Thanks for watching.